Hi everyone. Level okay? All right. Well, um, I'm pretty tired, honestly, <laughs> but I'm going to try my best. Introducing first uh, HPSD uh, to you now. So I'm Pierre Poncherry. I started HPSD like last year, middle of last year, for a number of reasons, which I'm going to uh, enumerate here. But maybe I'll try not to be too boring and also tell what we actually did and what we plan to do. Because um, this is not about bashing NetBSD, really. So what is HBSD? It can be seen as two things uh, initially at the start. It can be seen as a fork of NetBSD because it is a full copy of NetBSD's source code, uh, including the package base. So the base system source, SRC, and the package system, package source, including the complete history from the beginning of the project. So we got all of that in the Git tree. And we have a few new development branches, which are, uh, of course, specific to us. But also, it is not a fork of NetBSD, because uh, we didn't change so much to the code. We have contributed some changes back already to, to NetBSD. So it's not different from your own local checkout of the CVS tree, really. So And nowadays, um, forks are not anymore seen as something hostile, more like the normal thing you do at home, hack on, and then maybe contribute back or publish or whatever you want. So, yeah, uh, if you want a few words of, on NetBSD, I, I think everybody should know what NetBSD is here, but just in case, the project was started in 1993, so it's one of the oldest uh, open source projects developed as a community around source code revision system, source code management system. So it's a follow-up to the uh, original BSD system maintained at Berkeley. Um, it gave birth to OpenBSD somewhat painfully in 1995, um, it has about 256 developers today. This today means when I did the slides uh, middle of last year, we have a, f a few more now, like four or five since then. So the number d is no longer looking as cool, but um, it, it's still growing, which is a good news. Uh, so NetBSD, if you don't know already, has a very casual like type of development with centralized repository and um, a lot of technical discussions before committing anything for most of the developers. Um, so I really like NetBSD, I really love it. it I really appreciate that uh, it, there is such a focus on having a clean architecture in the first place and is therefore portable. It was never like the aim in the first place, but it gained the reputation of being portable because of the clean design. Um, the system is cross-compiled by default. So every time you build NetBSD, even for your own platform, by default, it's going to first compile a compiler and then use this compiler to compile the system, which is uh, pretty cool because then it's uh, trivial to do the same for other architectures. And so it means it's trivial to work on any architecture from your own architecture. Um, therefore, it also attracted lots of really cool research. Some of it has been lost, unfortunately, which is also one of the points of HPSD. Uh, but regardless, it has tons of really awesome modern features like ASLR, um, now root file system cryptography. Uh, it, it features Zen. It, it has really good support for it, including as a, at the hypervisor. RUMP is a um, also like sort of a user end kernel, which can uh, turn the system into a different uh, architecture. We, we, you can actually use NetBSD as a micro kernel. It's, it's still very experimental, but RUMP is the, the, the way towards that. We have some very, ba very basic ZFS support, uh, D-Trace to some extent, and so on. All thanks to the NetBSD development model, which um, means that all of the... the, the wh wh where should I start? Okay, so in NetBSD, only official developers can commit to the tree which means belonging to the NetBSD Foundation, which means being invited to it. You have to apply. It takes a while to be accepted as a developer. Usually it takes a while to be invited in the first place. Um, then commits are usually reviewed, especially if you're new to the project. And work on the code is always public. This is um, a very important notion uh, regarding HPSD because from the nature of CVS, even if you create a branch, it's going to be public. So everything you do is going to be emailed to everyone following the mailing list. Uh, branches are allowed, but they will stay forever. You cannot delete branches, as far as I, uh, as I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
and of course existing features are not allowed to break. Uh, so this is all good, it's like pretty commonplace in, in open source development projects. However, I think in the case of NetBSD right now, it's, it, it's quite harmful. So if you have occasional contributions and you don't want to be necessarily a developer, someone has to be available to commit your stuff, someone has to go through the problem reports or whichever way you reported, and uh, it, ta it can take a while before anybody actually does it. And it happened to me like uh, a few years ago before I was official developer, I had quite a few patches uh, and I had to go to a conference to uh, like really poke at somebody uh, with a commit bit to force him to, to commit uh, my changes because nobody had reviewed them, which is sad. But of course, we are only so many, right? So it, it gets annoying if contributions are major because they need to be reviewed also and it's even it takes even more time to review and reviewers cannot easily test and patch your changes also because of the nature of cvs because it's uh, difficult to remove your own set of changes uh, import a patch from somebody build everything again uh, make sure it really works and um, then patch it again fix some things and send the patch back to the original submitter this is all manual and tedious work and so even if you are an official developer with access to the repository, you cannot easily tinker, commit, break, revert your own changes because if you want to do so, everybody's going to see it and probably be pissed because you're going to break stuff and or spam people. So I, even myself, I, I just don't do this, even if I would like to. So on top of that, NetBSD has a lot of code inside the base system. It has uh, an import of GCC, of XORG, of BIND, of Postfix, and quite a few more. It's always a debate what we should bring in or not. Um, and my own personal view on this is I don't care so much as long as I have the flexibility to choose whatever I want to include and if the manpower is there to maintain everything. But unfortunately, since... Um, beginning of last year, I cannot run NetBSD on my workstation or on my laptop because of XORG. Because NetBSD uh, requires right now its own version of XORG to to run. Um, the one which is packaged as part of the official packages no longer works on NetBSD, which is kind of a shame, I think. So even on my old workstation and old laptop, this one, I cannot use the upstream XORG as package from package source and I want to run NetBSD on my main system, and I want to, to use X or something graphical, like the regular applications. So I've been bashing CVS a bit, um, but really I like it. I, I like the interface, it's simple, it's easy to fix a repository if it breaks, it's easy to like have sub-modules, um, branching is quite okay, and I don't like Git, if you ask me. I find it inconsistent, opaque, difficult to use. It took me like two years to really get used to it and start to do things properly. But on the other hand, what you gain from, from using Git is just so practical and, and helpful. Like you can work offline. Like this, is, this alone is a reason to switch for me. Or uh, you can branch for free. Like you just check out minus B and oh, you have a branch and you can do whatever and it's not going to break your main stuff. And you can stash and sta stage and commit. Uh, it means you can just have a pile of, of patches you can just push to, and then you have a pristine tree, and then you can import it again when you have your changes done. And it's, it's really powerful and great. So this is where HPSD kicks in. Really, I mean it as a staging area for NetBSD. <laughs> of course, if NetBSD doesn't accept every patches we make, it's going to be a fork. It's going to, to have specific changes. It's decentralized, which for me is uh, enough a reason to move to it. And since it's popular, it's just the one that I chose. So all of the technical debate for me is completely irrelevant. I didn't want to get into it, I just wanted to work, so I started this. Which means it's also more open, because anyone can just clone the trees, commit changes, uh, at least locally, and then the aim of the project is to be as open as possible. I'm going to explain how this works. Uh, so anyone can, re can really contribute and and uh, push changes to, to our repositories. And um, therefore, w it is very helpful to polish patches before inclusion in NetBSD, because everybody can just uh, create patches, propose them, then you can mirror, pull, cherry pick, and so on in, in Git say. And it means uh, you can do actually more work with, with more people. 
So how we do it in HPSD right now is we have uh, four main uh, repositories, four main Git uh, trees. Two of them are pristine copies of the original code of NetBSD. So uh, they are called NetBSD source and package source, which means in theory they are constantly updated from uh, the official mirror of, I mean, unofficial mirror of Vyog from CVS to Git. And then HPSD has its own uh, copy of, of this. Uh, of course, you can track both as remotes and import stuff from the NetBSD one to the HPSD one. Um, and anyone is allowed to push any branch, except for the release ones. So we have a few branches which are dedicated for the official stuff. Uh, so like the master branch is our tentative current, or equivalent to current, which is therefore tracking NetBSD current with some changes on top. And then we have the release branches for the stable uh, stable stuff. Um, so back on NetBSD and what um, what we want to change, what we want to to work on. Um, first, the f the features which are in NetBSD, which have been there for sometimes many years, but are not enabled by default, and therefore actually broken for the for most of them. So ASLR. Uh, is there for a long time now, but it's broken. I could not run OpenOffice if I had the SLR enabled right now. I could not run Firefox. I could not run Python. Git would crash every second time. Uh, it's really annoying. Um, SSP has restrictions, and for a long time, uh, the kernel would break. Uh, it wouldn't compile if you enable SSP for many architectures, especially ARM, Spark, and a couple others. So this is slowly getting better. I think more developers now are are enabling SSP by default. Uh, then secure levels are available, but are rarely ever used. And to be honest, I don't really think they are. Uh, it, it's such such a great feature right now. I would prefer to have something else, maybe. Uh, very exact. Um, I tried it uh, for a while. I could never get it to work for you, but I think it was my fault. But we have it. I don't know anybody who's using it, actually, but we have it. Uh, very exact is about maintaining a list of checksums of all of the binaries you have, and then the kernel is in charge of checking that the binary you launch matches the checksum, the original one. Uh, so it's meant to avoid any backdoors and uh, tempered binaries and so on. So if if you didn't set it up correctly, you cannot boot. Or you have to revert to a, a previous uh, very exact level. Uh, because simply no binary is going to run. Um, Modular kernels is also a never-ending story. Uh, there are some issues, I think. I didn't try it for a while, so I cannot tell for sure. And then what I can tell for sure is that modular XORG from the packages is broken. Uh, so what I did on this machine here is, um, in HPSD, we chose to follow the last known release of package source uh, to work with modular XORG, which is the Q1 from 2013. And I'm maintaining it, m maintaining it sorry, for security. So we have it in a git tree, and we are doing uh, pull-ups, uh, cherry picks of fixes from the more recent package source branches to um, to build new packages. But all, of, uh, all in the base of 2013 Q1. So in a way, it's some kind of LTS support, long-term support that we are doing. And the original idea was not even to have long-term support in the first place, but to unbreak XORG. So yeah, what we want to do is really to uh, provide more exposure to all of these cool features and uh, have a, a more, use, uh, more usable way to actually work on them and share fixes and patches and so on. Um, on top of that, what I really would like to push is to provide more services to the developers uh, of HPSD to attract them in the first place also but really to, to provide comfort and maybe experiment with having a more industrial approach to open source development. So I would like to provide email accounts, calendaring, maybe VoIP even, to have phone calls between contributors because sometimes it's really helpful um, to have more automated checks and procedures. Uh, NetBSD is already pretty good with this, but I would like to, to push for more. Um, I would like to provide uh, buildomatic uh, services, which is very helpful also because, as you may know, NetBSD is ported to many architectures already. And as a developer, you cannot easily test your changes on everything. You cannot build even everything. If we would have to make a release for all 20 architectures, I would not be here. I would be like uh, in my attic trying to 
uh, boot all of these old machines and trying to boot the candles and so on, it, it's not feasible. And I don't have a nuclear power plant at home, so yeah. Um, yeah, so we want to, to, to push for this, to push for more infrastructure and automated stuff, also because of the lack of manpower. Um, so it's not simple. We have still a lot to do, but we have achieved a bit already. And uh, we have a stable release right now, uh, which is more like a rolling release. Uh, it's based on NetBSD's last stable branch, so NetBSD 6. We have a few extra features enabled by default, but not much, I think, right now. Um, we are maintaining for security, which is also not fully, it's not fully up to date right now. I'm really trying to, to push it, but I have a day job too. Um, we have stable binary packages, which uh, we are maintaining actively. And uh, we ho hopefully have uh, an easy way to install and deploy the system. Right now it looks a lot still like NetBSD, but we're using packaging quite intensively and it's very, very helpful for the, the way we are managing uh, packages now. Um, also, eventually I would like to have a graphical installer and um, provide default ready-to-run images, ready-to-flash images for different devices and for virtual machines and so on. Um, I would like to have a rolling release, uh, which is pretty much what we have right now already. Um, so you can find it, of, of course, online. We have Git repositories online. Uh, we have a new port to a new CPU. Uh, we have signed binary packages. And hopefully it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue this way. Um, uh, before I go to a more maybe a hands-on review of the system, uh, I would like to thank the Git community, uh, GitWeb, GitOlit in particular, GitOlite, Jörg for his work on converti converting NetBSD in the first place to, to different VCSs and Git in particular. We, without his work, it wouldn't be possible. NetBSD for the high standard, everybody who joined already on, on the IRC channel and on the repository. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the talk part. I know I've been a bit a bit fast. I'm sorry for that, but maybe I can show a bit more uh, of the system uh, um, right now instead. So unless you have any questions about the slides, I can show a bit about how everything happens. All right, let's go. So you're gonna have a look now on the configuration of the um, Git trees of HBSD because it's one of the very cool thing about GitOlite. So on top of the official NetBSD, uh, HBSD, sorry, trees, which are here, maybe I should make this bigger. All right, that should be easier to read. Full screen, yeah. So these are the official trees, package source, source, I didn't, the NetBSD stuff here because I don't need it. I can have it as a remote in HBSD source anyway. And here you have the unofficial one for administrators only. But since I'm nice enough, I'm going to show it to you now. So with GitOlite, you can uh, accept uh, anyone uh, inside a uh, to, to contribute inside a, a group of, of uh, Git trees. And you just get their SSH uh, public keys, you store it in this directory. So I have a few developers already, like we are six, seven official developers. And then you configure the trees as you may, as you see fit. And it means access control. You can really allow anybody to push branches uh, safely, even if they contain tainted code or whatever, they're just gonna be separate. Because uh, say for the package source repository, I gave read-write access to the master branch only to the masters, read access to the developers, and then I deny developers anything else. I gave read-write access to the stable branch to releases, um, and then read only access to the developers, and then everything else is read-write for the developers. So you can really just let anybody send just, uh, a public key and give access, and you know they will only be able to touch whatever own stuff they have. It also means everybody can touch other people's branches right now, but of course, as a developer, you can tell me, hey, please lock the branch to allow any access to me, or please allow force pushes to myself, and then I can just set it up here. It's the same way for the source repository. 
So very handy. Uh, right now the masters can force push, which is not intended, but I think it was uh, for my uh, fixes. Uh, I can explain, I can tell a few more about this, uh, why I have to do this. So force pushes are allowed here, which is because of the presence of the plus. Then I have a branch called 900 for supporting this phone, on which I also have done uh, force pushes, obviously. And then the original uh, NetBSD trees are only allowed to the special HPSD user. So really, you have your uh, group of people. Right now, I'm the only master. Haha. Um, I'm the only releaser too. Hey, you can all you can all contribute. I mean, you can all join. I will allow. Uh, we can have a discussion. See what we will, how we will we want to do this, which is a good point. I can also speak more about this, and then I can just add you to this list if uh, we get on good terms. All right, so yeah, right now we have six developers, and one of them is also a designer making artwork. Um, so yeah, we do have artwork also. All right, so I just mentioned um, being a developer and so on. So yeah, this, let me check if I have net, uh, which I do not. Let's try. Is it the FOSDEM network I should be using? Okay. Okay, so let's try open stack instead. Dual stack? Okay. So unfortunately this is not gonna work directly, but I can do this. Okay, now it's associated, and I should even have an IP somewhere. Yes, all right. Awesome. Cool. So, this is the HPSD website. We have a wiki. It doesn't really work well right now, but this is a work in progress. So, um, we have a beginning of a constitution, which defines the roles of the different people of the project. So, the leader right now, that's me. Can maybe make this bigger. Does this work? Not really. Yeah. So I dictate the tentative vision and orientation of the project. Uh, if you prefer it portrait mode, you just let me know. Um, stupid joke. I'm tired. <laughs> the masters the masters are in charge of the current development effort, so maintain, uh, maintaining the, um, the development branches. Then the releasers are responsible for the release status of the stable branches. Developers are like the workload, the, the workforce. The users are the most important members of the project, because I'm polite like that. We have a security team of one person right now. And so, yeah, basically, um, I've been trying to, like, just put into words um, the organization of the project as it is now. I would also like to put into words the, the workflow, or the Git workflow, which I should explain a bit more, how, how I'm doing things right now and how to actually join the hop on the train. So we have... We do have a few rules already, but really it's 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 quite simple. It's just like to make sure there is no ambiguity right now uh, for for the organization organization of the project. Um, so this is could I mention that? Uh, I don't know what else I could show. Um, we have a splash screen. <laughs> yeah, looks like this. Very basic, we have a logo. Ah, I didn't show off my t-shirt, I could do this now. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's all about DIY here, and I made this T-shirt myself also. Yeah. Very good point. So the question is if there are any binaries available. So yes. First, uh, we have an FTP server. I hope it's going to work too. OK, no. OK, maybe it doesn't want FTP. WebKit for some reason. Yeah, OK, so we have here the official HPSD um, web server, which has a mirror of a few NetBSD binaries. I think, um, yeah, some sets. OK, so but not much. But for what really matters to us right now, so first in HPSD, I chose to name the release just 6 to reflect the fact that um, it follows the NetBSD 6 branch. No no stable or minor release, just the, the, the NetBSD minus 6 branch. Uh, and I have built binaries for alpha, AMD64, two EVB MIPS sub architectures, 64 and 32 bits. 32 bit Intel, SJ MIPS, and Spark 64. So they have been built at different dates. This should be fairly accurate. Um, so, yeah, about September. I, I should really update, I mean, should really make new, new binaries because there have been some security fixes in the meantime. But right now, reminds me, I have to mention the, the YORG repository. Yes, so everything I have right now comes from Yorg's repository, which I'm going to show in, in a minute. Um, because first, to end the chapter on binaries, I would like to speak about packages. Because right now, it's the most important strength of HPSD, I think, is that we have uh, packages which are maintained. They're not just built and uploaded and uh, be done with it. We are um, uh, making new versions regularly, I mean, building new versions regularly. So you can simply add this repository to the uh, to your packaging.conf uh, to your packaging repositories.conf configuration file, and you will have updates just like Debian does, and they are signed. So all of these packages are signed by the official HPSD key, which I have here. Uh, HPSD that should work. No. Ah, I forgot minus. Okay, so this one. This one is the one you want to see. So every package is signed with this signature right here, with this fingerprint. Yeah. And um it's it it's really easy to therefore update and install uh, new packages. Uh, maybe I could try right now. If I have a root shell somewhere. So you just you just run package in update. Up to date and this is from this configuration file. So you just have to put this line for MD64 over here. And then you get the packages. And you can just do packaging, well, upgrade. I don't think I have anything to upgrade right now. No, but I could try to install uh, whatever, uh, something I didn't install yet. Um, yeah, and here it goes. And this is coming from HPSD. Um, does it answer your question? The, um, yes. Uh, Very good point. Um, it's been added to the package source code 12 years ago by Alistair, I think. So it was one of the first uh, open source systems to actually implement it. However, it was not done really in a very adequate way. And on top of that, um, it was broken. And I figured out it was broken only last year, because I was maybe the first one to actually use it in production, sadly. 
and uh, there were a couple in uninitialized variables, which meant it would work for very small packages, but not for anything bigger. So I can I can illustrate a bit more. So if you go into uh, if you want to look at how a package uh, how a sun package looks like, I should have a cache somewhere here. Yes, cache, and let's take Hanspel as I just okay. So really, a sun package, even if it has the regular extension. It's an uh, AR archive, so you will have to remind me how to read them, but I think it's AR like T, yes. So it contains, depending on which technology you used, you chose, you chose for signing the package, a number of files, uh, package hash, package TPG signature, and then the original uh, TGZ, yes. And then the code is using libarchive inside libarchive. It's a bit of a hack, it's, yeah. It works. Um, so there is one way to ex to extract them. I'm sorry, Alistair, for not using your script right now. Um, I think is it X? Yes. Okay. So if you look at the content of these files, the hash one contains a list of hashes. Surprise. Ah, okay. Again. That's terrible. Consistency Unix, yeah. So yeah, package source signature, it, it says which package it is, which algorithm was used to generate this list of hashes. And then, yeah, really I think, if I remember right, it just takes 64 kilobytes at a time and signs them. And then the libarchive code inside uh, the source code of package install checks the, the checksum for each block. I think it's quite ugly, and Alistair agrees. So actually, he told me about all of this. Hi, Alistair. Um, and then you have the GPG signature file, which signs the file that I just showed, and not the original archive, which is, I think, to me, the biggest issue right now. I don't know what you're going to say, but I mean, it, it works, and it does the job. And then you have the original archive, which should be Hanspell, whatever which is untouched from the original um, original code. Uh, one more thing uh, that I did for HPSD is um, normally you have to use package admin to sign a package. And as you can see, there are two different ways to do it, with x509 or with GPG. And so I patched package source to uh, generate signed packages automatically in the first place. So if your etc mk.conf is configured properly, with signed packages uh, GPG, it will create signed packages instead of just a regular package. And you no longer have to sign the package yourself with package admin. Um, and this script, I mean, I have a set of scripts, which I could maybe show now very quickly, They're not very long anyway. So this is how I create the infrastructure and uh, Maybe that's not the part that I wanted to show. So the patch should be here. Mm, I think it's in here. No. Yes, so that's the change that I made, and that's in, in uh, HPSD, and I don't think this is in in uh, package source upstream, because the code changed between 2013 Q1 and, and now. And so this is automatically calling uh, package admin, if necessary, if configured to, either for GPG or, I think I put X509 also support somewhere, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, just, just below, right. Yeah, so this is also an HPSD addition to generate signed packages directly. And as you could see, it worked. I could install directly a package. There was no uh, error or anything. And I can also show that it's really checking the signature by installing, trying to install the one with package add in slash TMP that I just extracted, and it's rejected. 
also if I would tinker with the signature file, it would reject it. I checked. But you can check it also, of course. Um, anything else? So I have a hosting server on which I'm the only root, uh, except for the friend who is providing the, the VPS. And there is a, the, the GPG key has no passphrase over there. So it's not ideal. Ideally, it should even maybe be a separate server, and then I should s send the package over, and then you should bring it, uh, give it back signed. Maybe we could wrap this on package admin in some way, or script it around. But yeah, this is how right now packages are signed. Okay. Uh, all right. So. To, to to sign the the simplest is not to to push the package on the on the sign server and get it back because if you try to sign open office and whatever it would give you a, a very very large overhead. So what you want to do is just to take the hash of your package hash and uh, send it through SSH something and you get back in STD out uh, the signature and you just have to push it. Should be enough. All right, thanks. That's very good to know. Um, any other question? Yeah? So the long run plan for HPSD is first to uh, welcome more people. Uh, I really would like to um, have more contributors, I mean to, 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 uh, to help more people um, work on, on NetBSD using Git. Um, then my own personal goal is to have uh, what I mentioned in, in the slides, a graphical installer. Um, what else? Support for devices, like uh, telephony devices, the tablet that I demonstrated earlier last year, uh, to have like ready-to-flash images, to generate them automatically. Um, I almost have uh, push-to-build support in the repository right now, using a Git hook. Uh, I have a script which automatically builds and, and um, publishes the packages when you commit them. So when you commit to the release branch, it's just going to trigger the build. It's, this is almost working, um, th but it's short term. Uh, but really long term, I would like to have more and more tools uh, to work on more architectures, even if you don't own them. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it from the top of my head right now. So uh, Julian just mentioned this could be seen as a NetBSD whip, and yeah, this is pretty much true right now. Yeah work in progress NetBSD. And also I, I know for a fact that some uh, some people do not want to be part of the NetBSD Foundation but would like to contribute anyway. So it's a way for them with less legal hassle to uh, be uh, to, to provide their work online, to push their work online and, and uh, give it exposure. And having all together, uh, working all together in a single place also helps uh, visibility of, of everybody's work. Um, Another thing I noticed that, uh, and that I mentioned in the slide, is that sometimes some work is lost. Like you have people who contribute huge patches, then they are on some mailing list or, or sometimes just with a link on some server and then the server dies and the work is lost because nobody has a mirror for it or you, you don't know who maybe have one, has one. And this is the case, for instance, of Robohost, which was written by Julian Assange, which is apparently a really cool file system with deniable uh, crypto. And it's only found right now on some archive.org uh, mirror, so it's it would have been lost if it wasn't for this for this mirror. And I think it's a shame that we do not have this somewhere in a contrib repository or or something like that. And with Git, you can really easily just import something as a branch and and have it there. I did it also for HPSD with the work of Grégoire Sutre, who was using just a checkout of the CVS tree into Git to be able to work on DRM support before uh, Taylor was working on it. And so it had less exposure because it was just another mirror on, on GitHub with no history or, no, or anything. And then to me it shows that people want to do this, even official developers, because he is an official developer. And uh, to be able to work efficiently on, on his project, he had to clone the, the NetBSD tree inside Git and then push it on GitHub. and to me, it's a shame that we cannot uh, do this now with the main main repository, or at least all together in, in one single place. 
So yeah, my th that's also one of my long-term goals to to like optimize a bit development in in, in any way possible. So the question is if I have the support of private companies. Uh, technically, I am my own company, so <laughs> that, that's one. <laughs> and uh, so I'm currently hosting all of this on my own personal resources and that of some other friends. Uh, of course, I would welcome the support of companies and really trying to, uh, through this work, to industrialize more a bit the development, to have a more industrial approach to development using Git and uh, with the build systems, with the infrastructure for developers. I would really like to push for something more like a company, even if I'm not, I, I don't want to go to work every day, but, uh, and I don't want to feel this way when I work on an open source project, but I want resources, I need, I need services. And this is, this is also one of, those of, uh, one of the things I want to provide for HPSD. And maybe attract companies, vendors to, to use it. Uh, the NetBC devs have created their own mailing list exactly for this discussion, uh, which is called Tech Repository. And each time this comes up, they say, please read Tech Repository 10 years ago. This was discussed or something. And about that, I would like to mention that we just welcomed a new developer recently uh, in the project. And his first, his first message on the mailing list was, hey, I would like to run this poll on uh, which VCS we should use. This is true. And so it means even for new developers, it's a very hot topic. They don't want to use CVS. They want to try something else. And I want this to happen. So this is just just what HPSD is about. Oh, yeah, that's, that's probably on, the, on that list, but on that, on that uh, uh, Unless you just mentioned it, but you never switch to subversion. <laughs> are you asking w which other VCSs are on this list? On, on, uh, so, of course, the, the um, yeah. Well, okay, the candidates are obviously SVN, Mercurial, and a few others. And honestly, I don't know all of them. And for me, everything centralized is, is out of the question. So. The only criteria I used for Git is really decentralized and uh, popular. So I don't, I don't care about the technical aspect because we are software developers. If the tool does not fit our needs, we can change the tool. And to me, all other discussion is, is pointless. Of course, it's convenient to have something that works already this sort of the way that you want it to work now, but you can always change the tool or adapt your workflow to the tool if necessary. Sometimes it's painful, and I had to do it for different OS, which I I'm going to speak about in a few minutes. But yeah, that's just I just wanted to 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 keep working and not discussing. The question is, if I plan to keep the base of Net HBSD at the same as NetBSD? Yes, absolutely. Um, NetBSD, um, uh, we are tracking NetBSD 6 right now, um, and NetBSD 7, what, what it should look like, it looks more and more attractive to me because we may have finally KMS support at some point. Uh, I heard that there are some new uh, commits uh, on in this regard, and I do not want to, to fork NetBSD, honestly. I, I like the system how it is. I don't want to like get resources out of the project. We need every everything we everybody we can have. And um really I'm trying to attract more people and push more features, enable them, test more stuff. And the day that NetBSD seven is gonna be branched is gonna be in, in HPSD. Right now the U name is still NetBSD. I tried to change it just just for the sake of it, and um, I know where to do it now, but it would be so much trouble that I'm not gonna do it anytime soon, no. Well, I really hope I will not have to. Maybe someday I will have to if really some patches don't get integrated and that they are they're not compatible anymore with the original system. But 
yeah, I, I don't want to change it. I would I will maybe publish my branch just for the sake of it to show how it's done, but uh, I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to do it. I don't want to publish my branch. Um, it reminds me I wanted to tell about the issues with Yorg's repository. So Yorg Zonenberger is an official developer too, and he's pushing uh, NetBSD, uh, a, a mirror, a Git mirror of NetBSD into a GitHub tree. Um, he, is de he has detailed all of this on his blog. You can read it, it's very in informative. And so this is where HBSD comes from right now. It's just a fork, not on GitHub, uh, of, of this tree. Uh, you can have it as a remote also, if you want to follow it. But uh, the problem is that in NetBSD, a number of developers, uh, among other things, uh, uses CVS admin to change commit messages after the fact, so that they look more uh, accurate to what was actually committed. Uh, the problem is that this uh, conversion is happening uh, regularly when York pushes it, but when somebody modifies a commit message, it changes the git hash that's associated with the commit, which means uh, the git tree changes back in time. And so if you follow, uh, if you follow the, the, the git tree, it will break because at some point uh, somebody modified a commit and the chain of, of hashes no longer resolves. You, you don't have, uh, Git cannot tell anymore. Um, uh, I mean, Git cannot easily import the, the, the new changes because some commit in the middle was, was changed and so you have to rebase everything on this, on this modified commit to be able to keep working. And it means also uh, doing, issuing force pushes. Uh, which means you 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 change the the content of the of your remote uh, server uh, because the the trees were changed the, the the commits were changed. So this means that right now the automated uh, script that's following this branch, I mean this 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 tree, is broken because uh, it it some commit was changed back in 2010 or something, and um, therefore we cannot pull from it anymore. So. I tried to automate repair all of, of the tree by using git rebase and so on, but unfortunately I didn't get it to work yet fully reliably. I got some help from uh, Jan about this, but we were still stuck. So we're looking for a better solution. Um, I don't know exactly how to do this. One way would be to have our own way to generate uh, the git tree from CVS, uh, but using the official git tool is uh, doesn't work with NetBSD. Using CVSPS, we have to fix CVSPS first. Um, so, yeah. But one very interesting point is that uh, more and more people are using Git to track uh, at least package source to the point that the uh, package source management committee has just forbidden the use of CVS admin to help um, mirrors be more reliable and um, to be sure that uh, conversions would be more stable. So I, for one, welcome this change. Unfortunately, I think just after this announcement, the tree was broken again because somebody did a CVS import and it changed uh, a commit again back in time. So we're stuck again. And right now, HPSD doesn't follow package source anymore. Uh, automatically, I mean. So I have to fix that also. Um, yeah, so this is all still a bit experimental and, and we are learning here um, about how to use Git and how to make it interact with CVS. And interestingly enough, Git can also provide a CVS interface to the Git tree. So this could be also maybe something interesting to try and to see if NetBSD could maybe use this feature to provide uh, like a migration time if, if switching to Git in the first place. So yeah, there are different ways, there are different, different things we can try. One thing that's not quite clear to me, if you have a, a central um uh, CVS repo, you send out a commit message when a commit is done. But how do you do that in the Git case? Say somebody pushes a branch that contains 500 commits. Do you send out 500 emails or one huge email? Or how do you do that? So Git doesn't send emails automatically, but you can uh, program hooks. And I think the hook works per push. So if you push 500 commits, you can just send one email. It's fine. It really depends on how you do the hook. And there are many, many scripts that can do this already because people have IRC bots and 
They have also contributed uh, uh, contribution software where you can just reply to a mail and then it's going to uh, push whatever commit from the mailing list directly to the tree and so on. There are many, many interesting things that can be done with Git easily. Also with CVS, but I mean, there are exactly the same kind of mechanisms in place. So you can do all of that and simplify it to your needs. Uh, it's also, this is also the reason why the IRC bot is no longer on the official channel right now because uh, there was one uh, line per commit because the script was too simple and so I got kicked out of Freenode. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going I'm, to I, I'm gonna upgrade the script and hopefully it's going to be back online. Any other question? So maybe I can take a five minutes break before the next talk. And thank you for your attention. I hope this was clarifying many things. And see you around. <laughs>